This is just going to be a short video. I have uploaded a small version of the PSD file used to create the Rocket Randy background. This file is actually in its unflattened state, so everything's active in it, and you can have a look at how it works. And I've also uploaded some brushes, some of the foliage and forest brushes that I use to do the background. And you can grab those from our website at edfilms.com. Just check out the Rocket Randy link on the side or go to edfilms.com forward slash rocketrandy.php and you should see all the files there. Now the actual file I uploaded is significantly smaller. The image size is only 2000 by 1152. The real image is actually closer to 8000 or 9000 wide. So it's quite a bit smaller but it's the only way I could get it small enough that you guys could actually open it. So what you'll see here is I've kept all of the layer structures together so nothing's flattened really yet and you'll actually be able to see how all of these different layers are made up and all of the different pieces involved in making the textures to to actually make this picture look the way it did so you should be able to play around with it and get a pretty good sense of how it works everything's named pretty well I accidentally named this the same ground two and ground two but Essentially, everything's named pretty well. I've kept a lot of the layers going on in here. Uh, all the textures are in there, um, all the adjustment layers. So you should be able to just go through it and see exactly how it was put together if you're curious. And the other thing I've done is I've saved together a whole bunch of the brushes for you. Um, these are brushes that I've made to over the over the period of working on several films and paintings and these brushes I use a lot now these ones here these really hard edge ones I use for alpha channels or alpha mats masks so for instance if you create a, a landform shape of some kind like this and you create a solid color out of it you can use these brushes on the mask itself so let's just go brush you can use these brushes and you can use it to really create a hard cutaway from the edges here the reason these are different from other brushes because let's say for instance uh, the brush other brushes I included that are more leafy structures they have varying opacities on them which is fine but one of the problems is is that it's not a solid cutout so it's semi transparent so if I were to put something else behind this let's just grab this and we'll just make another shape here let's make another solid layer so you can see that you can see through them. And this isn't always desirable, especially for a cutout look. So I've created the very the two different sets. So you, you'll have access to a lot of these other brushes that I've used in the past, which are all my like, leaf shapes and things like that. And these are just things I've painted and put together and you can use them to create trees or vines, stuff like that. These are better for if you're actually doing real paintings. Uh, you can use them for backgrounds too, but you just have transparency issues and and it can be a little bit tricky to work with. Uh, the one thing you can do if you really want to use them for color masks or just for a mat is just turn off the transfer and that will help solidify it a little more. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. There's um we've got a, I've got a whole bunch of trees. I've got trees that I've made. These were used for the Homeless Harry's Hill animatic. So you can see all these different these different dead trees. I'm just going to use a regular color because right now you can see all of them. So these are the trees. And then I've got uh, I've got lots like groups of trees here. And then what else? Like just I needed tons of these little these are these are kind of like poplars and spruce trees. I think they're called spruce trees. Or birch trees, sorry. These are birch. Now this one, you can see if you look close at it. It's got these little white patches in it. Those are actually, these trees are supposed to be reversed. So you're supposed to use these trees on, let's say, like a black black or a dark gray background, something like that. So then you can paint you can paint these trees in as a white color. And so then you get the, the birch tree look with the little black knobs and knots in them. You can see that there. I've got also these trees, which are a little more elaborate. And I also have some trees in here that I've included that actually have leafiness to them. So here... You can go back into black mode, switch this out. So this is just a fairly conventional tree. And then I've got it with different states of leafiness on them. You can see that there. 
Now, the other thing I have is some of these, which I use for like bushes and stuff like that. Um, things like that. This one has some paper texture or canvas texture behind it. And this is, this is another one that I use. And this I, I use sometimes like if I were to create a, let's just go really quick here and create sort of a, create another col color solid, mix that off. And so if I were to, let's grab one of these big brushes, these really opaque brushes here, put this to zero, and put that to white. Okay. So we've got this really opaque brush. And let's say I've created a tree. And let's add a little bit of variation in this tree's leaf structure. And don't forget to rotate and resize these brushes. So if you want to get a different angle on this thing, just turn it around and you can get more of a, a droopy hanging down look to them. I think I, I should also have, oh yeah, this guy here is pretty good at creating like hanging down things. Use these as inspiration. You can obviously use them as much as you want. I don't really care. I'm, I'm always making new brushes. So, but take a look at them and see how they're made and see how how they've been angled and stuff like that so that you can see how you can make your own. Okay, so let's say I have this. Now what I can do with those, those other brushes that I've, I've included, let's go up here to some of these bushy brushes. This one here, for instance. You know, we can set its opacity down, maybe put its low down, and actually you can start painting in some actual structure for this tree and creating a, a bushiness for it based off this silhouette that you've made. So anyways, it's, it's one way to work. I mean, obviously you can work a whole bunch of different ways. There's so many different ways to actually do this stuff. But this is, this is my, one of my methods because it's easy and I can, I can fix a lot of bad, ugly mistakes. So you use that brush and then you can, can combine that with a whole bunch of different types of tree layers. Way up. Oh, I don't like that one for this. Anyways, so you can sort of see what's going on there. So it's pretty easy to create some interesting leaf patterns and stuff like that. And then if you want, I've included a bunch of unique leaves here. So if you want to like add some leaves specifically, they, these brushes are pretty big. This composition I'm working in is quite huge. Uh, well, it's not super huge, but it's like 3000 or something like that. So in here you can just add some leaves if you want to fill that up. Oops, those are way too big. Let's see what I'm doing. I don't know. You can just kind of do anything. And if you want to really um, accentuate, like add some extra details to this, you can. Do this little thing here or whatever. You know, add some leaves. Anyways, so I think I think you get the idea. There's also a whole bunch of little grasses and stuff I made. And these were also used in the Home with Harry Hill background paintings. Just the animatic. So there's a grass. I think that's a grass I made. That might be a Photoshop grass. I'm not 100% sure. But these grasses, I, I usually use them in combination with a whole bunch of, whole bunch of different grasses just to get. I think that might just be a Photoshop brush, but anyways, you're gonna you're gonna get that anyways. This one is for like spiny, shrubby type things. There we go. And then there's this, which is sort of like traditional field grass that I made. Just sort of mix that in there. And then what else is there? There's these guys. This is like a different type of a grass. Like that and then what else do we have this stuff which is like sort of tussles of grass here and then there's this one which is like really really strong um kind of like these really sharp barbie like type grasses or bushes and there's this Again, this is like dry prairie prairie things, and then I have these again, more more twigs and branches and stuff like that. So that's all in there, so you you guys can kind of just play with that and try to make beautiful images. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. So all of those were used in making of this. Not all of them, but a lot of them were used in the making of this. Uh, if you look close, I mean it's quite pixelated now, but a lot of those grasses and stuff I actually used. I just turned the transfer off on them, and uh, yeah, so that's it. That's about it. So have fun. If you like what ED Films is doing and want to stay up to date on the latest developments and tutorials, please show your support by liking us on Facebook.